we were asked to find the line integral of the gradient of a given function over a given path. Okay, so um, when we find a line integral, in order to find a line integral of f dot delta s, what do we do? We first have to describe our path, r of t. Okay, then we have to partition. And then we have to find f dot delta s on a typical subinterval of that partition. Then we form a sum, Riemann sum. We let it approach the uh, integral, and we write down and then perform our integral. Okay. So, the path that's specified here is a straight line from 0, 0, 0, the origin, to the point 1, 1, 1. How can we parameterize that path? Well, I'm going to say that path is, um, and, and I can't tell you, I can't give you rules for parameterizing paths. You just have to do a lot of problems, look at examples, and pretty soon you get the idea. And if you haven't done enough of that, you just have to do more of it. It should be obvious that the function r of t equals ti plus tj plus tk, with t going from 0 to 1, gives you a straight line from 0, 0, 0 to the point 1, 1, 1. Now, I, I'm not going to discuss that anymore. If you're unclear on what that means or how to do that, you do need to go back and review the earlier part of the course. Um, Another way of looking at the line from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, it's a line y equals x equals z for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. Now, of course, if we replace x by t, then we get y equals t equals z equals x. In any case, this coefficient of i is a function x of t. And a coefficient of j is a function y of t. A coefficient of k is a function that we call z of t. And x of t i plus y of t j plus z of t k then is a parameterization of our curve. In this case, x of t is what? It's just a t. y of t is t. z of t is t. t goes from 0 to 1. As t goes from 0 to 1, this vector, the tip of this vector, with its initial point at the origin, traces out this curve, this path, this line segment in this case. Okay, so what do we partition? Okay, we, well we've described our path R of t. We want to partition. What is it that we partition? We partition our variable. Okay, now when we describe the path, we want to describe that path in terms of one variable if possible. And for line integral, we need to describe it in terms of one variable. <coughs> t is our one variable. T goes from 0 to 1, so we're going to partition the interval from t equals 0 <coughs> excuse me, to t equals 1. So we're going to let t 0 equals 0, let t sub n equal 1, and we have t0, then t1, t2, and so forth up through tn. There's our partition. On the ith interval, then what is our force dot r delta s? Well, our force is going to be evaluated at a sample point within the ith interval. We call that sample point t sub i star. So to get the force at that point, we evaluate our function f of x, y, z. This is our big F function. Here's our f of x, big F of x, y, z function. At x of t sub i star, y of t sub i star, z of t sub i star. <coughs> For the given parameterization, x of t i star is just t. And so is y of t i star. Well, it's t i star. X, x of t is t. So x of t i star is t i star. y of t i star is ti star, z of ti star is ti star. So in place of x, y, and z in the function here, we have just ti star for each variable. Now with different parameterizations, these functions won't all be the same, but whatever these functions are, 
uh, the x function, the coefficient function of i, is going to replace x. The coefficient function of j is going to replace y. The coefficient function of k is going to replace z. Okay, so we evaluate our function at our ti star sample point within the ith subinterval of our partition. And we dot that then by our delta s sub i. What's our delta s sub i? Well, it's our displacement vector for that interval. Okay, what's the displacement vector for our interval? Well, if we think of r of t being our vector function, then r prime of t is our velocity function. And now we're assuming that t is time. Doesn't hurt to do that. Okay, so if t is time and r prime is our velocity function, then what's our displacement? Well, displacement is velocity multiplied by the time interval. So we multiply the velocity and we evaluate r prime at t sub i star. That's how we're going to get our velocity for this interval. And multiply it by delta t sub i. Now, if you don't want to think velocity, well then, if t means something besides time, uh, then r prime of t means the rate of change of r with respect to whatever t is. Okay, this is the rate of change of r of position with respect to time, but with respect to t, whatever t is, this is a change in t, this is still your change in position. This is still your delta s, whether you think of this as position and time or not. So, f sub i dot delta s, again, evaluate f at the set point of the ith interval, that's how you get the ith force. Multiply the velocity on the ith interval by the duration of that time interval, you get your displacement. There's your f sub i delta s sub i. Then, Well, then we approach an integral, and we're going to get to that over here. But let's just go through the mechanics of it. Well, I'm going to go through the mechanics in a minute. You should go through the mechanics. You should go ahead and figure out what this expression is. You have all the information at this point. If you don't already know it, or if you've forgotten it, you ought to, you ought to go ahead and do it without looking at anything else on the board. So we'll come back to that in a minute.